Have you ever been in a situation where you didn't know whether to laugh or cry? Well, that is something like the experience of David in Psalm 40. There he praises God in joy. There he petitions God in sadness. First, David has great reason to rejoice in his God. We find his praise in verses 1 through 10. He extols God for his answer to prayer in verse 1, for his deliverance in verse 2, for his song in verse 3, for his blessing in verse 4, for his works and thoughts in verse 5, for his law in verses 6 through 9, and for his gospel in verse 10. Yes, David delights in God, yet he also has great reason for sorrow. Thus he laments to his God in verses 11 through 17. We find his plea in verse 11, his predicament in verse 12, his urgency in verse 13, his enemies in verses 14 through 15, his people in verse 16, and his poverty in verse 17. Now this expresses David's spiritual experience, yet it goes beyond that. For this psalm, like the rest of the psalms, express the spiritual experience of all of God's elect. And most of all, it expresses the spiritual experience of Jesus Christ, the Son of David, the true Israel of God, the true head of all the elect. Indeed, this psalm refers to Jesus in a most definitive way. Hebrews chapter 10, verses 8 through 10, quotes this psalm. It applies it to Jesus. It concludes, we have been sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. For this is a messianic psalm. It tells forth the life and lament of Jesus Christ. Have you heard of the hard sayings of Scripture? Those are the passages that, that trouble you. You wonder, what does that mean? How can that be? And so we can wonder here about this psalm. How can this be a messianic psalm? How can this refer to Jesus Christ? Because in verse 12, Jesus seems to be confessing his sin. He says, innumerable evils have surrounded him and his iniquities have taken a hold of him. Well, Jesus never committed any, any sin. How can this be him speaking in the first person? Well, the best explanation is the one that, that Calvin gave to it. He said that this refers to Christ taking the sins of his people as his own and saying, that he identifies with his people. He bears their guilt. He wears their shame. He confesses their sin as if it were his own. And that is the answer to that troubling question. How can this refer to Christ? This is what it means for Christ to be our representative in redemption. Therefore, because Christ is your Savior, because He is your head, because He is your representative, you can pray this prayer as one of His people. You can go through its lines and say, ah, there I see my Savior, lo, it is written in the book of the law of God sending His Son to do the will of the Father. But it also can refer to you. Pray for that obedience. Pray through this psalm. Make these words your own, for they're a messianic psalm, and they're also the psalm of your heart, dear believer.
Amen.